Stanford University. Hello, everyone. Welcome to CS 193P Spring of 2020. This is lecture 11, Al Spresco version. I'm here outside to celebrate that we're pretty much covered the main topics of Swift UI. And you should be able now to go off and do your final project after you finish with mm -hmm. assignment six, which you're in the middle of working on right now. I'm still gonna have a few more lectures, although I will not be having lectures during dead week, nor am I gonna do a lecture on Memorial Day. So I believe that leaves us with three lectures more. I will try to accelerate those lectures as much as possible because they're all gonna be topics that you might wanna work on for your final project. Not required, but that you might wanna use them. And if I wait too long to bring them out, that you won't have time to incorporate them into your final project. So I'll try to get those out as soon as I possibly can. And speaking of your final project, read the rubric carefully. And if you have any questions about it, make sure you ask in the class forums questions I'm happy to answer and clarifications, etc. In terms of advice for your final project, I really recommend doing a good detailed project proposal. That's your first deliverable. It's due on Monday. And you're not going to be held responsible if you say you're going to do something in that proposal and you don't end up doing it. So it's better to suggest a little too much there and then come up a little short than the opposite. Suggest quite not quite enough, to, you're not sure what you're going to do, and then you dive into it and you really haven't thought ahead and planned out what you're going to do. So that's my first piece of advice. My second piece of advice, old hackneyed advice from all your instructors of your courses here, which is start early. Now, this is not just start early so you have more time. You want to start early because, as I've said, maybe even said in this course, I don't remember, but programming is like doing a crossword puzzle. Even if you're really good at crossword puzzles, you'll sometimes get started on one and you just can't figure it out. And you're just convinced there's just no way I'm going to get these last four across and down in the corner or something like that. It's impossible. And then you go to sleep and you wake up the next day and you have your lunch. And then in the afternoon, all of a sudden you're like, oh, yeah, I know what 39 down is. And once you get 39 down, the whole thing falls into place. And that's because your subconscious got a chance to work on that crossword puzzle. Your conscious mind is distracted by a lot of things going on around you. It's got limited bandwidth. Your subconscious mind can sit there and cook on problems and just come up with the most amazing solutions. And so let your subconscious work. Work on your final project, even if it's just 20 minutes in a day to touch base with it and remind your con subconscious mind what's going on. You have a really good chance that the next day you're gonna get 39 down, okay? At, or the equivalent thereof in programming. So I really recommend that. All right, big demo again today covering another topic that's not required for your final project, but it's likely most of you are actually going to want to use this thing called a picker. So let's jump into that right now. This demo is mostly about picker, but we're going to do it in the context of a new app, not Memorize or Emoji Art. And this app, which is called En Route, and I'm going to show it to you in a moment, is also going to be the basis for next week's demo. So Today, we're not just learning about Picker, we're learning a little bit about how Enroute works, so that when we do our stuff next week, we'll have a shared knowledge of it. Another difference today is with Emoji Art and Memorize, we started those applications from scratch, but this one I'm starting with a working code that does a certain amount of functionality already, and we're gonna add functionality to it. And I'm doing that because this application fetches some information from the internet. And so the code to do that is not something that really is within the scope of this class. You're certainly welcome to look at it, see if you can understand what it's doing. It's not that complex and it's all pretty much demo aware, just something I put together over the weekend uh, for this demo. Uh, but I don't really wanna go through that in detail. Instead, I wanna focus on some features that will really help you with your final project, like today, Picker. So let's review this app called On Route. I'm gonna run it so you can see what it looks like. On Route essentially uses an uh, API that's available on the internet from a company called FlightAware. And you can see that it's actually loading up some flight information here. In this case, it's loading up flights that are in the air en route to San Francisco International KSFO. That's its little airport code there. 
And you can see that it's telling us this SkyWest flight arrives today at 1142. That's in two minutes. It's coming from Los Angeles. It's telling us about all these flights, different airlines, different uh, origin airports, uh, etc. And our goal today with Picker is we want to add some UI. I'm going to put a little button in the corner here called filter. And it's going to bring up a modal sheet that lets us filter these results by, for example, where it's coming from or which airline or whether it's in the air or not. Because there are flights coming to San Francisco that are scheduled to arrive at certain times, but maybe they haven't taken off. They might be scheduled to take off later or they might be delayed or whatever. I'm not currently showing any of those. All these flights you see right here are in the air, actually flying to San Francisco at this very moment. And this is real data coming from FlightAware. FlightAware is not a free API to use. It's quite inexpensive. So eh, if you have a few bucks, you can head over to FlightAware and sign up and get your own key. And so then when you run this demo code, you can get live data like I'm getting right here. Uh, or I also am going to provide some simulated data so that those of you who don't want to go to FlightAware and sign up, you'll get some simulated data from over the weekend, basically. It only has a couple of airports, San Francisco and Las Vegas, I think. But it let you at least see the code and get your picker working and things like that. Let's talk a little bit about how Enroute is built, how this app works. So this view right here that you're seeing, this list of flights, is just a single view. It's the only view file that we have in the whole app right here, this flights on route view, not Swift. And so let's go through this. You can see it's actually quite a simple little view, really not much to it here. At the top level, there's this flights on route view. It's just a navigation view. You did notice that our app over here is definitely in a navigation view. Even though we don't click on these and navigate, one day maybe we would, but we don't now. Uh, you're still getting the title of the navigation view. And if we had some buttons up here, like we're gonna put that filter button up there, we are getting the benefits of being a navigation view here. And then inside that navigation is this flight list. This flight list is this view right here, another really simple little view. All it does is have a list that's for each through all the flights, and it uses this flight list entry view to show each of the things in the flight here. So this is, you know, the flight list entry is showing you all this stuff in each row. So let's take a look at flight list entry, which is this view right here. It's also simple little view. It's just a V stack with the name of the flight, like United 245, when it arrives and where it's coming from. And that's it. That's the entirety of flight list entry. All that's happening down here is we're just calculating strings for all those things, the name, the arrival, and the origin. Now, one thing that's interesting about flight list entry is it has two view models here. Each of these view models represents either all the airports or all the airlines that my app knows about. So as I'm using my app, it's finding out about more and more airports and airlines, and it's asking FlightAware about them. What's the name of them and where are they and things like that. And that information is all coming back. And these are just observable objects that when the information changes, they do their object will change dot send and they update and cause things like this to redraw with the proper information of the name of the airline uh, or the name of the airport. So that's all that's going on here in flightless entry. So this is a view like you're used to with a view model, has two view models. It's perfectly fine for a view to have multiple view models as we'll see next week. And it just takes any flight, one of these FA flights, and this FA flight comes back from FlightAware. We can take a look at that. Here's all the code for FlightAware in here. You can go look at it later. But an FA flight just has things like the identity of the flight and what aircraft are being used, the destination and origin cities. Uh, has some, some little functions. Notice that I made FA flight to be codable and hashable and identifiable and comparable and custom string convertible. So there's a lot of things I made it be. Uh, you know what these things are. Comparable is an interesting one. This is the comparable protocol right here. It just lets you compare two things to see if they're less than. This is a nice one to implement. I'm comparing them by arrival dates, which is how we usually want to sort flights. And one thing that's really nice about implementing comparable is that the array method sorted 
will work on an array of FA flights here without any arguments. And it's just going to use comparable to compare the flights. And then this other one up here, custom string convertible, also a very interesting one to implement. That is this var description. If you implement custom string convertible up here and you provide this var description, then you can say what happens when this object, a flight object, gets put into a string with backslash open parentheses, close parentheses, right? Normally that shows something that Swift generates about it, but you can have it say something that's kind of more easy for you to understand. Here, I just identify my flight with the identifier and its departure and arrival information, etc. So that if I print one of these FA flights, eh, it looks nicer. So that's our FA flight. That's essentially what's being drawn in each of those flight list entries. If we back up here to the flight list, so this is the entire list over here. That's the, this view that is this whole list, including all of these things. It has a view model as well, flight fetcher, which is a different thing. Now, flight fetcher is a very simple view model. Let's take a look at it. It essentially takes something called a flight search, which are search parameters for the list of flights to show. And this flight search is a simple little struct right here that just has the destination airport, origin airport, the airline in the air. If you set these things, then the only thing it'll show in the list is the things that match this. Of course, destination would be like KSFO, so it sh the list is showing things for KSFO. If I specified an origin or an airline, then it would only show me flights to SFO from that origin or you that are flying with that airline and in the air is the thing that says whether or not we're showing only flights that are in the air or not so this little struct just essentially defines what search we're doing so flight fetcher this view model right observable object takes one of those flight searches and you can change the flight surf search at any time it makes this bar available that you can set and anytime it changes it goes out to flight aware and starts fetching the flight it fetches it immediately and then it continues to fetch it every certain amount of time 30 seconds configurable what you want to do and then as the information comes back it just pops it into this array of fa flights those fa flight things we looked at and it's just showing you the latest result and it's assigned published so of course every time more results come in this thing does its object will change dot send and our view like this flight list over here is going to redraw itself you can see that I have this little computed var in my flight list of flights, which is an array of FA flight. That's just my view model's latest. It's giving me the latest flights from my view model. And that's how I'm able to do this for each, where I'm just going through the flights. Notice I'm using their ident, their identity of the flight, like SWK456 would be the identifier of some flight. And I'm using it to go through and put those flight list entries together. All right, so super simple little view, not much to know about here. Most of the guts of this program is over here in this flight aware code right here that's doing the fetching. Again, you can go take a look at that if you want. We don't really even look at any of it in our code except for this FA flight. We're obviously looking at the flights to see their information. The airport view model, this all airport view model, notice it's a shared instance of the view model that's perfectly fine for one view model to be shared by many views they're all looking at the same all airports so we can have a shared one here and it just gives you it can give you the codes of all the airports it knows and then also you can use a subscript on it with giving it a certain airport to get the info that comes back this airport info is down here in flight aware it's what comes back from flight aware just things like the name of the airport and where it's located things like that and similar one for airlines here just another observable object lets you get all the airline info so we only use these few uh models here when we want to find out information about airports and airlines which is rare like we're doing it down here of course in our flight list entry we want to find out the origin airport we're using this all airports here to find out what that is and also the airline that we're flying on obviously we're putting its name here in the name of the flight that we have right here like united to 2828 american airlines 2248 we want to put the name of the airline so we need that as well okay so now that's all there is to know about en route you know how en route works and what we're going to do today is add a little filter 
UI so that we can filter through this list. And we're gonna need a picker to do that because we're gonna be picking airports, picking airlines, things like that. Picker is great for that. This is also a great opportunity to kind of review modal sheets, how we put a modal sheet up. So let's first of all, just put the code in our base on routes view here that adds a little filter button to the upper right corner of it. And then use that filter button will bring up this modal sheet. So this is all review. We already know how to do this. I'm going to add that filter button as a navigation bar item. I'm going to put it on the trailing side, actually. I'm just going to call it filter. That's going to be the name of my button. It's just going to be a little computed bar down here that some view. We'll have it return a button that says filter on it. And inside here, when the button is clicked, we're just going to set some Boolean bar, like show filter equals true. So we'll have to have a little bit of state for that. Private var show filter starts out false. And when we set this bool to true, we're going to have a modal sheet come up. So we say dot sheet, right? And we know that dot sheet takes this is presented, which is a binding, a binding, remember, to this show filter. So that whenever this bool is set by us, this will uh, appear. But also anytime the sheet is dismissed, this will be set by the sheet back to false. Let's just put a text filter on there for now. The modal sheet, we're just going to have it say the word filter on there just to make sure our UI is working. So let's take a look at this. This hopefully should add this filter button. There it is up in the corner. When we click filter, woo, we got filter. So this is where we're going to put our UI with some pickers to pick the destination airport, pick the origin airport, pick the airline. We're going to put that all uh, in here. And then when we dismiss that, it's going to update this whole thing to show us just those airlines or origins, etc. How are we going to do that? We obviously need some UI to go here, not text filter. We want it to be something like filter flights, I'm going to call it. And it's going to have to take our little flight search here. Okay, remember that this flight search that we have as state in our en route view, it's the thing that's saying what we're searching with because we pass it to the flight list and say, hey, Mr. Flight List down here, please only show me the things with this. So I'm go going to filter the flights by essentially editing this struct, changing the struct. And as soon as I change this struct, which is this bar right here, it's going to redraw and that's going to cause the flight list to be passed a new flight search and it's all going to. Uh, update itself. So we definitely need to do that. And then, of course, since this is a presented thing, I'm also going to have is presented passed to it as well, my show filter. And that will allow this view, this modal sheet view, to be able to dismiss itself. Because, again, not a big fan of just having swipe down to dismiss be the only way to dismiss things. It's nice if you have done buttons. And you're going to see we're going to need a done and a cancel for this one. So let's go create this view, right? I just made this up, so we have to go actually implement this filter flights. That is a view, so I'm going to new Swift UI view, and I'm going to call it filter flights. Make sure that it's in the right place. Yes, I know some of you are still having a problem where you're putting things up here in the blue. We want things in the yellow there. Here's filter flights. It says hello world. Now we know that our filter flights has a couple of arguments here. These two bindings. So let's put those two bindings in right off the bat. And we know how to pass bindings at sign binding to bar. We called one flight search. And that is a binding to a flight search struct. And then we have the binding bar is presented, which is a binding to a bool. So now this filter flight is hooked up to that. By the way, I'm going to have my previews commented out for now. I really don't want to deal with having to try and to pass bindings in my previews, as we saw, can be done. We can pass constants in here, et cetera. Uh, but we're just going to ignore that for now, make this demo go a little quicker, because we're really trying to talk about pickers here. We have this flight search passed into us. Let's make sure that it's actually working by having our text here say, filter flights to our flight search destination. So if we're properly 
binding this flight search back to our flight search state that's in our on route view right here, then when this prints out, it should print to KSFO in this case. Oh, yes, sorry, filter flights, flight search. Put the name up here because that's the name of this binding bar right here. So let's run this. See if our filter is now saying filter flights to KSFO. Hopefully it is. Ready? Filter. Woo! Filter flights to KSFO. So we are binding our flight search to the one that's back in our route. So now we're really ready to proceed here to use some pickers and stuff to build that. When I go in here and I start changing things, like let's say I change the destination. If I change the destination SFO over here to be somewhere else, Las Vegas or LAX or Newark or somewhere, it's going to cause this whole thing over here to refetch. My flight aware fetch is going to have to get a whole new thing. So I'm not sure that as I'm choosing it over here in my picker or whatever, I want behind this thing constantly updating. And that's what would happen if we made filter flights this sheet be like our palette editor if we remember our palette editor in emoji art as we changed the name or added emoji it was actually changing the palette back in our document that was live editing our modal sheet was editing the thing it was editing live so it was changing live i don't think we want that here here i think we want kind of a done cancel we talked about this in the hints of the homework assignment as well Sometimes you want live editing, sometimes you want done cancel. And here I think you want done cancel because you might play around with what destination you want. And then once you decide, okay, done, now we'll do the fetch. We don't want to be wasting money and internet resources by fetching things that we're just picking on the way to deciding what we want. So we're going to do a done cancel thing. So let's put a done cancel on here. Okay, I want to put a done and a cancel. Now we did the done button in emoji art by creating our own little title here. But I'm gonna actually draft off navigation view because we know that a navigation view, it puts a title up here and it has room for two buttons like done, cancel. So I'm gonna put this whole thing in a navigation view so I can get those. You're gonna see that I need this whole thing to be in a navigation view anyway. So um, a little bit uh, foresight going on here, but it's not a bad way to get buttons and a title is to put things in a navigation view even if you don't plan to navigate which i don't really plan to navigate but you're going to see i'm going to end up needing to navigate in this modal sheet so let's put that done cancel in there really easy to do i'm just going to say navigation bar items i'm going to put on the leading side a cancel button and on the trailing side a done button let's go ahead and put a title on here too navigation bar title, we'll call this the filter flights sheet, that'd be good. So we need cancel and done. Those are just bars, so cancel is some view. It's a button that says cancel. And when this is pressed, is going to set our is presented to false. This is again, we pass our is presented in as a binding so that we can dismiss ourselves and certainly cancel wants to do that. And done, it's very similar. Right? Here's done, it says done. And it's gonna also cancel, but right here, it's going to have to make the actual changes because done means I'm done, go do it, do the fetch and all that stuff. Cancel means just cancel me and don't do the changes. So we'll have to talk about how we're going to do this in a moment. All right, so we have this navigation bar stuff, but we need to put it in a navigation view, of course. Make this work. There we go. Let's run. There we go. Filter. Woohoo! There it is. There's our filter flights to SFO. We're in a navigation view right here. We've got cancel and done. We can cancel. That's good. We can also Go back here and hit done. That's working as well. But of course, we're not doing any actual editing of our flight search struct, which is what this is all about. We want to edit this struct. How are we going to do this done cancel business? One kind of simple way to do done cancel is to have your own private state here, which is a draft of what you're trying to build. So we're trying to edit a flight search. 
and we're going to create a draft of it. We'll have our entire UI edit this draft, and then at the end, when it's time to make the actual changes, we'll say self.flightsearch equals self.draft. In other words, we'll copy into the binding, the bound value, this, our draft value. And flight search is a struct. You see right here, it's a struct. So when we say equals, it copies, right? Structs get copied. So we'll be copying what's in this draft back into this flight search here. So that works on the way out. What about on the way in? Because we essentially kind of want to say something like, set this to the flight search, okay? I want my draft to start out with whatever this value of this binding is. But of course we know we can't do this because we're in the initialization phase right here and this is not initialized yet, it's being passed into us. So we can't do this, right? Can't use within property initializer. So how do we set something like this? We need an init. If we're gonna have an init, it needs to have the same arguments that this thing has over here. So we need the flight search and the is presented as arguments to our init. So that's interesting, because these are bindings. So how are we gonna have a flight search argument here to our init? It needs to be a binding, right? This, somehow it needs to be a binding here. How, it's not, we're not passing a flight search in here, we're actually passing a binding to one. Well, remember back from lecture nine, we talked about what these things are. These create structs. Okay, these property wrappers like at sign binding and at sign state, they create structs. This creates a binding struct. So we can access that actual struct using the underbar version of this. And remember, there's also the non underbar version. That's the wrapped value of this struct. And then there's the dollar version of this. That's the projected value of this struct. Well, here we're in initialization. So we really can't use the projected and wrapped values because this needs to be initialized, right? Because we're in init, these have not been initialized. We are initializing these. That's what we're supposed to be doing in init. That's what init's all about. So we want to actually set this struct. We're gonna say underbar flight search equals some struct. So we need a binding struct right here. So we're gonna force a binding struct to be sent to us. And binding this struct is a generic. It has a don't care, which is the type of the thing it's binding to. So we are binding to a flight search here. So the argument here is binding to a flight search. And now I can say under bar flight search, which is the actual struct, the binding struct, equals that binding struct that's being passed to us. So this is how you can have init where some of the vars you need to set are bindings. Right, you declare the type of the argument to be a binding to the vars type, and then use underbar to set the actual struct here. And we can do the same thing with is presented. Here, that is a binding to a bool. And so we can also here say underbar is presented equals is presented, the argument to this function. So how about the draft? How do we set the draft? We kind of like to say self.draft equals this flight search. And that's what we're trying to do, but we can't really do this. These two vars are not of the same type. This right here is a binding to a flight search. That's its type. And this is the wrapped value of this, which is a flight search. So that's why it's saying you can't assign a binding to a flight search to a flight search, right? This flight search is not the same type as this draft because we're doing the draft wrapped value here. So we're gonna to have to initialize this state like we learned to do last time by setting its underbar draft equal to a state with some initial wrapped value. And what is the wrapped value? Well, interestingly, it's not the flight search because the flight search here is this binding. It's the flight search's wrapped value, right? A binding's wrapped value is the thing it's bound to. So flight search's wrap value is the flight search that is bound to. So here I'm creating this draft state, initializing its struct by creating a struct, a state struct, whose wrap value is the same as the flight search wrap value.
this is why I spent so much time in lecture nine going over what these property wrappers really are so that you would hopefully understand code like this. We've copied this draft in from our flight search. Let's double check that we have by going to our body and instead of showing our flight search destination, let's show our drafts destination. So if this copy has happened correctly, then this draft will be showing properly. So let's take a look. All right, filtering, here it is. Oh, filter flights to SFO, that's our draft destination. Excellent, so it obviously copied our flight search in. So now we're actually almost done. All we need to do going forward here is change our UI in here from just being a text field to being a bunch of pickers and things that are editing this draft. We're automatically going to copy that draft back out if we click the done button. We'll do nothing if we hit cancel so the draft will be ignored. But this, this makes it really easy for us to implement in here. So let's do our first picker. Let's do draft destination. Let's add a picker that lets us choose a new destination for our search. Picker has a few constructors, but we're almost always going to use this second one right here that takes a title, either a localized string key or a title. And uh, you can use a text. That's what this one up here is that lets you specify a label for the title. But it's very common in picker to have the title just be a string. So let's go ahead and do this one. The title of this, I'm going to call it destination because I'm setting the destination airport here. The second argument here to a picker, very important one. This is a binding to the thing you want to change with the picker. So for us, we want to change our drafts destination. That is what this picker is trying to do. Choose a new destination in our draft flight search right here. And then this last argument content is the list of views that are going to be in our picker. One thing picker interesting to understand is you are going to provide a list of views. That's why in a picker we're almost always going to do a for each. That's the easiest way we know to provide a list of views. This is a list of views, and this picker is essentially picking between those views, and we're going to show you how it determines when you pick one of those views what to update your selection to. So let's get the views first. Again, we're going to do a for each. Now, I want to be able to pick an airport, so I need all my airport codes, so I'm going to use all airports.codes. We'll see how to do that in a second. And uh, this is string, so I'm going to do dot self. This is a for each after all. And this for each, it's going to say airport in. Here, let's just print out the airport. Airport, these are airport codes like KSFO or whatever. Now, how do we get this all airports thing? Eh, we're going to have a view model, the same view model I used down here in the flight list entry to get all airports, this little observed object. I'm going to copy and paste that one over to here. And it's going to be part of the view model for this view. And this bar provides all the codes for all the airports that this view model has ever seen. Now, we're not quite done here. This is making a bunch of views that are going to be in the picker. So the picker is going to be able to have a view for every code. But how do we match this selection up to this view? We do that with dot tag. And I'm going to tag these with the airport. So whenever this view is clicked on in this picker, and we'll see what a picker looks like in just a second, whenever you pick this view, essentially, it's going to take this tag and put it in this variable. And again, it's got a binding to this variable, so it just puts it right in there. And what's really important about pickers is that this tag has to have exactly the same type as this binding is bound to. Otherwise, this makes no sense. So luckily this is true here. This airport code is just a string. Our destination over here is an airport code string right there. So this string is exactly the same type as these airport codes, which are strings. Let's see what this looks like. All right, here's our flights. Woohoo! Oh, well, here's a picker, folks. Okay, it's a wheel. You can kind of Go around, pick a different thing, LAX, Las Vegas right there, Newark. But this is incredibly ugly. <laughs> all right. It's, first of all, kind of floating off in the middle of space right here. And also, this destination doesn't quite fit there, this title. 
So uh, this is really, really bad. And SwiftUI is doing the best it can given the environment that you're asking it to, to show in. And really, our, it's our fault because when we're doing something like this, we know that the environment we really want to be in is a form. Just like we did with our palette editor, we put all the fields in a form. We want to do the exact same thing here. Now, something very interesting is going to happen to this when we put it in a form. Now, this should be working. Okay, we are picking this. Here's Las Vegas. I'm going to hit done. It should refetch to Las Vegas, and it does. So it is actually editing it. So nothing wrong there. It's just the look of it is so bad right now. So let's put that thing in a form. Watch what happens when I put this into a form. All I'm doing, no change really, except for just putting this picker inside a form and hitting run. Filter. Oh, completely different look. This picker has completely adapted itself to the fact that it's in a form. And this is a fundamental aspect of Swift UI. It adapts its controls to the environment that they're, they're in. And I mentioned this earlier with button. Why, why do we use a button instead of just tax, text with on tap, tap gesture on it? But we use a button because the button knows whether it's on an Apple Watch or uh, an Apple TV. But it's not just cross-platform. It's within a platform. If you have a picker and it's in a form, it knows it can use this really cool form right here where it has the title and the value side by side. And it doesn't need the wheel because when I click on this, watch what happens. Whoop! It navigates to a list of all of the airport codes. And I can pick it here, San Diego, over here, Las Vegas. And this is a much better way of doing it. Now, one thing about the adapting to the environment, however, though, you have to be a little bit careful, is that it adapts because it knows it's in a form. It doesn't necessarily adapt because it knows it's in a navigation view, even though this adaptation requires a navigation view, right? When I click on here, I'm navigating to this view that it's wonderfully building uh, for us. And if I took this navigation view away, let's comment this out, and go back and see what happens it's still going to adapt to a form right here but i can't click on it i'm touching it right here nothing is happening because i'm not in a navigation view so it can't navigate now if i really didn't want this in a navigation view i do because i want done and cancel but if i didn't want it i could make this go back to being a wheel so pickers here have a dot picker style and you can say i want this to be the wheel picker style no matter what the context is. So now we go back, we're still in a form, but we've got this wheel format or look again. Still looks bad. So let's go back to using our navigation view. It definitely looked a lot better. Let's try and understand what this picker has built here. This obviously is a list that is built, okay, list, capital L list, of all the views in this for each. You see this for each is making these texts. These are just the texts in here. That's all they're in here. But one thing that's interesting to notice is that back here, this is also one of these texts. It's the text whose tag matches the thing we're bound to. So this view actually appears twice. It appears here. And it appears over here, down where is it? Oh, way down here, with a little check mark by it. So that view is used in both places. You have to understand that when you're making a picker, that this view that you're picking, you're actually picking the view, and the view is what's appearing here, and it's being reported back to you via this tag. So we've got this working for destination, and let's make sure it's still working. Change the look of this thing here, but let's change our destination to. Boston, Woo, flight into Boston. All right, so we got that working. Now let's add another thing besides choosing our destination in here. Let's choose our origin airport. So we only show flights to SFO from LAX or something like that. We can do that with almost exactly the same code here. This is not our destination. We're doing our origin right here. 
and the selection is our origin. Otherwise, it's the same. We're looking for all airport codes, etc. So let's see if this works. Right here, coming to SFO, we filter destination. Looks like it's working great. Origin. Uh, hmm. Okay, this is blank. Maybe that's okay because we don't have an origin yet. We didn't choose an origin. It's nil. All right, we'll go in here. Here's our choice. Let's choose Denver. Oh no, it didn't work. Why can't I pick? an origin airport here, it keeps being blank. Is it actually searching? No, it's still showing me all airports here. So why is this not working? Well, this is a common thing. When people use pickers for the first time, they miss this tiny subtlety here that's going on. I told you that this bar has to be exactly the same type as this tag. This var, what's its type? The draft's origin, just optional string. Ooh, optional string. And what's this type? Oh, that's a string, because this is a for each of strings. So this is a string, this is an optional string. That's not gonna work. They're not exactly the same type. They need to be exactly the same type. Now, a tricky fix to this, actually, is to make this argument to our for each closure here be a optional string. So remember, this is, you know, equals void. This is, but we're just using swish, swift inference to not have to specify these things. But here I am going to specify it and make it this type. Now, why doesn't this break the for each? Because the for each just wants you to give you a clo give it a closure that you can pass its thing into that will work. And of course, you can pass a string into a closure that takes an optional string. Now, this has changed airport inside here to be an optional string. So now this tag is an optional string, and this is an optional string. So that fixed our problem where these were not the same type. However, kind of broke us a little bit here because it's saying airport here is now an optional. And so we have to unwrap that optional in here. So I'll up unwrap it with a defaulter that says something when airport is nil. And what do we want when airport is nil? We kind of want it to say any airport or unchosen airport or something like that. So let's see if this works. Do our filter here. Well, origin, that's still blank, so that's still not right. It's not right. Go in here. Mm, okay, this is good. I don't see the choice of any airport, but well, let's try something like Denver. Oh, at least this is working now. When I pick something in here, Dallas, it's working, but that's because we've made these match. But there's no way for me to go back to origin any, right? I can't set this back to nil. Why can't I set this origin anywhere here to nil. The answer is that this list of views is made from this closure right here. And right now it's a for reach of all the airport codes. There's no airport code, which is nil. So since there's no nil in there, there's no nil in this list. So if we want to be able to choose any, we have to put nil into this list. But this does not have to be just the for each. We could go here and say text of any. It's got the tag of nil. And we've added another view. So there's all these four reaches, but then there's this other one right at the beginning here. Now this doesn't quite work because Swift can't infer that this nil means strings nil. That's what this generic parameter V cannot be inferred. If we go look at tag, we can look at tag. Let's see if we take tag zero can probably look. Yeah, here's the documentation for tag. And you can see the tag takes a don't care. Tag doesn't care what type you give it as the tag. All it requires is that be, is to be something that's hashable right here. But if you just say nil, then it just doesn't have enough information to know what nil are we talking about, because it could be anything. So how do we specify that we want nil of string? There's a cool way to do that. String optional. Remember, that's an enum. And we can use the case none, right? We could also use sum of some string, but we're going to use none. So this is a way to say nil for optional strings. It's kind of a tricky little way to do that. 
So now we've added an extra thing. And when we go back to our filter, we should see another row. It says any in it. Oh, and it's even got the view here. Woo, there's that any row up there. So we can go over here to Boise and then come back, go back to any, and we're at any. And if we say done, oh, it's still showing any. But if we go over here and go origin, let's do, uh, I don't know, Denver maybe. Let's look to see if we can find a flight. Woo, there it is, a flight from Denver today. It arrives at 1 o'clock in about half an hour. All right. So that's what's going on here when you have a nil or an optional value and you want to be able to choose nil, you need to add a little extra view just for that because the picker is picking views. It picks one of these views. So you got to have a view for every option you want. Let's now go do the same thing with airlines. We can filter by airlines. So I'm going to put airline here. Eh, to make my life easier, I'm going to replace airport with airline because it's almost exactly the same thing paste 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 and i will need to add another view model up here which is all my air lines air lines air lines okay so now i have a view model for all my airlines and my airports so i can do that with my airline and this airline is of course airline in our draft flight search Hey, here we go, filter, yeah, origin, yeah, we can pick a origin, that's good, airline, any airline, or maybe United, so let's see, United flights into SFO, excellent, right there, and we can go back to any, hit done, the full, full list of flights. Now, one other thing that I'd like to make better is uh, these flight codes, I know them well, as you can kind of tell, uh, but a lot of people don't know, like, what are these things? Which, which what's what? What's K-O-R-D? What the heck is that? We want these to be nicer names than KSFO and K-ORD. We want to be names of actual airports, and we can do that too. This little, These view models up here, all air and all airlines can provide us a lot better information. So here, instead of just putting the airport code, I'm still gonna have the tag be the airport code, but instead of showing the airport code, I'm going to use my self.allAirports, this airport right here, and that might be nil. I might look it up and not be able to find it. So I'm going to optional chain here and use what I call its friendly name. And if that's not set, then we'll just use the airport code. So this is just friendly, getting a friendly name from this view model up here, this all airports view model, a friendly name of this airport. And we can do the same thing for this airport down here. And we can do a similar thing for the airlines, the air all airlines also has a friendly name feature. We'll go to our filter. Okay, destination, not KSFO anymore, San Francisco, California. Woo, these are all the friendly names of these airports. How about airlines? Yeah, we got the friendly names. So let's add one more thing, not a picker, but a toggle. Toggle takes a binding to something that is gonna to toggle. In this case, I want it to toggle my drafts in the air. And it also takes a label, and that'll just be for us a simple text that says on route only. So this toggle is going to toggle whether we're showing flights that are in the air or flights that are on the ground somewhere. Take a look at that. We go on route only. So I'm going to turn this off and go back to done. Ooh, we got a lot more flights here. Not departed yet. Flights that are scheduled to arrive later but haven't departed. All right, so that is all I really wanted to cover today on Picker. And hopefully that sets you up to use Pickers in your final project. Most of you, I'm guessing, are going to have somewhere in your UI in your final project where you're going to want to do a Picker. And now you know how to do it. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.